Hi all, this is Dennis and you on the Den Electro channel. I think many of you, just like me, have accumulated such chargers from cell phones. Their power usually ranges from 2 to 10 watts. In theory, they could be used somewhere, but the problem is that they produce very little voltage. Only 5 volts. Of course, they can be converted to a different voltage, but not everyone knows how to do this. Therefore, to prevent our chargers from lying idle, smart Chinese came up with an unusual device. Meet the adapter wire that increases the voltage. There is a standard USB on one side of the wire and a male connector on the other. Using such a wire, you can turn 5 volts into 9. Now you can power any modems, radios, TV boxes, old consoles, or even turn on LED strips. For the latter, samples are available for sale that increase the voltage not only to 9, but also to 12 volts. You can also try something exotic. Let's say we power a 12 volt fan from a power bank. Of course, you can also connect a router or modem if the electricity at home suddenly goes out. Of course, many have already guessed that the wire does not perform any miracles. He cannot increase the voltage. And the boost converter does it for him. It is located here. The manufacturer promises that it can produce 9 volts and 700 milliamps. Whether this is true or not, we will now find out. In order to test this wiring for maximum power, I put together a small circuit. I will apply voltage from this device and watch the current consumption at the input. This tester will show the voltage at the output and this current is consumed by the load. I will load the converter with an electronic load. She is behind the scenes. I apply five volts to the input. The output immediately appears at nine and I begin to increase the load. As you can see, with a declared maximum current of 700 milliamps, the voltage dropped to 8.860 volts. At this time, the input current is approximately 1.6 amperes. It turns out that the power consumption is almost 8 watts. And if we also multiply the voltage and current at the output, we get 6.2 watts. Well, if you then divide the output power by the input power and multiply by 100, we get the efficiency of the converter. It turns out to be 77%. Not the worst result, but of course, I would like more. If you further increase the load, the voltage sags even more. With a current of 1 ampere, the voltage is slightly more than 8 volts. Now I'll try lowering the input voltage and see if the converter can work. I will set the load current to the same. 700 milliamps. I'm starting to lower the input voltage. 4.9, 4.8, 4.7, normal flight. Until 4.2, the output voltage remained the same, and after that it began to drop. In general, it turns out that the supply voltage can be lowered to 4.2 volts, and the converter will work in the same way, delivering 700 milliamps. Now I will reduce the load. The current will be 400 milliamps, and the voltage will slightly recover. I lower the voltage further. Now the voltage can be reduced even further. 3.9, 3.8, 3.7, 3.6, and at the output, everything stays at 9 volts. 
With such a load at a voltage of 3.6 volts, 1.4 amperes are consumed. As you can see, the converter is so cool that it can work not only from the voltage of cell phone chargers, but also from the voltage of lithium-ion batteries, which have an operating voltage of 3.7 volts. When I turned the voltage up to 3.2, the output voltage began to fluctuate. It began to jump, now up, now down. Apparently the converter was trying to restart. When I reduced the load, the voltage returned again. Then I loaded it a little less, at 200 milliamps. I'll try to reduce the tension again. I was able to get it down to 2.7 volts and the tension subsides here a little. If the load is reduced and the current consumption is made very small, about 100 milliamps, then the voltage is restored again. Now the voltage can be lowered further and you can lower it to about 2.2 volts. Then the converter simply turns off. Although the voltage comes out of it, it is actually a supply voltage. The converter does not increase the voltage. But if the load is removed, the voltage is restored again. Well, now it's time to see what's inside. To do this, the halves of the connector housing can be separated with a thin knife. Inside there is this small board. This is a 2 amp 40 volt shot key diode. This is a throttle, a little broken. There are ceramic capacitors on the sides. Resistors are located below. And in the middle is the heart of the converter. A micro circuit with six AL101 legs. This is of course its code name, but in fact it is called SD6271. It operates at a frequency of 1 MHz and can deliver up to 2 amperes of current. For such a miniature thing, the power is very decent. It is recommended to supply from 2.6 to 5.5 volts to the input. During the experiments, I supplied 6, and everything also worked great. Fortunately, they didn't skimp on the wire here. Its length is about 1 meter. Many cell phone chargers have a wire that is even half as long. The connector size is standard 5.5 by 2.1 millimeters. The pinout is the most common plus or minus. If you need to swap plus and minus positions, then the wires can simply be soldered on the board. If you need such a wire, you can buy it by following the link in the description. There are 5, 9, and 12 volt versions available on AliExpress. The 12 volt converter produces the same 700 milliamps. But I think the 5 volt wire only outputs your charging current. Most likely there is no converter there and in fact it is only an adapter. That's all for today, like it. Write a comment if you liked the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and bye everyone.